Okay, you, got, you just hang there and act like you're just talking about it. Okay. Kind of look at it and then. Breathe. Looking at oh, it. Oh, looking at it. Talking, talking about it. all about it. Did you see the stuff? Yeah, it's it's like pretty here. neat. Oh, hey, yeah. just noticed you there. James Reeves, TFB TV with El Jefe of Q, Kevin Brittingham himself with his new project, The Boombox. Can you tell everyone all about The Boombox, Kevin? Yeah, The Boombox um, is the first gun, gas operated gun we're putting the 8.6 into. So the concept, just like the Honey Badger, um, a compact, lightweight weapon that's 300 meter capable, super and subsonic. Um, select fire for the government. Um, on the commercial side, it'll be a semi-auto, of course. Um, but all the features of the Honey Badger, lightweight, compact, reliable, everything you need, nothing you don't. Sub five pound, 8.6 gun, which you know is a 308 frame, basically. And that's where I was gonna go with this because you've got the Honey Badger. It's almost like the difference between the fix and the mini fix, if you're out there and you're familiar with it. Yeah. Right where you're talking about going from a 5.56 chassis and the Honey Badger to, mm -hmm. we'll say, like a 308 chassis or 7.62 chassis for the boom boxes. Yeah. Not quite identical, but very similar to yeah. the Honey Badger. There are some differences though. Yeah, there are. I mean, we changed. You don't need the top rail, it comes off, it's Q-cert on the top, our mounting system, the hand guards are Q-cert. Why do I care about Q-cert? What the hell is it? Lighter, stronger, better mounting system, 900 pounds of pull at each one of these junctions. Mm -hmm. So it's an aluminum hand guard with these stainless steel thread inserts pressed in from the rear, so there's an anchor on the rear so they can't pull through. So you know, this is a tedious process. It's a pain in the ass. So it's a way to mount accessories. It's the strongest, best way to do it, and we keep it lightweight. Mm -hmm. And how I do that is, I guess, if I want to attach different mounting points, I use the little screws there, right? Yeah, so it's not a totally different concept than M-Lock, mm -hmm. just refined and simplified and stronger. Mm -hmm. okay. So you don't do it blind. Everything is from the top, which is nice. So it's faster, easier, stronger. Uh, it's got a barrel pinch in the receiver. W what that does is allows us to not have to torque the barrel nut to the degree that you need a vise. So you can change the barrel or caliber on the tailgate of your truck or on a bench. Um, different lengths. Starting in the back, it's a similar um, receiver extension in stock to the Honey Badger. Um, the Honey Badger is a little more difficult to disassemble and reassemble with this. So with the boom box, we got rid of the guide rod and uh, the carrier and buffer is all one piece, so we have a large diameter spring, so it's very easy to disassemble and reassemble. Um, the receivers are billet. What else? On controls it? are identical to the honey Controls battery. are yeah. identical. You get literally the best trigger ever made, which we did. Um, it's our own bolt carrier and bolt system barrel extension. Uh, looks very similar to an AR. Um, but just like the Honey Badger, most of the parts are proprietary. Uh, you get uh, Picatinny top rail or not, mounting solutions for optics that'll go directly Q-cert to the receiver so you can get rid of all this 1913. Uh, the hand guard's held on by two drive screws and a pinch, and so that allows us to be very strong without the top rail in place. Uh, you get a one and three twist stainless steel match barrel, adjustable gas block, which uses um, you know, basically a jam nut rather than using a pin or set screws to hold it in place. So it seals better, you get better reliability. Really the functionality, we need to optimize it as much as possible to be able to operate subsonic and supersonic. And with that being said, this is easier to operate with super and subsonic than 300 blackout. That, that's kind of a tougher thing to solve. We're using heavier projectiles here and the fast twist helps a little mm -hmm. bit as well. What type of accuracy can I expect out of this? Uh, the six inch barrel would, you know what's interesting is with the shorter barrels with subsonic, we're gonna get the best dispersion. So the goal, and we'll see how production ammo turns out, is one MOA with subsonic at 300 meters. So three inch groups. That's ambitious. That's very ambitious. It is. And can you do it? We've done it. We'll see with production, you know, I can make all mm -hmm. the claims we want in prototype. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And supersonic, um, you know, it should be like the Honey Badger. You should be able to get one MOA at uh, 100 meters and, and beyond. So, but again, it's the 99% solution for inside 300 meters, super and subsonic. And little, there we go. That's amazing. I mean, you're talking about essentially um, the 8.6, being to 308 or 65, what the 300 blackout was to 556. So it's just impressive the amount of energy 
How much energy are we talking here, Kevin? Millions, all of it. Millions of foot pounds. You heard it here. Yeah, it's cool. It's like like you said, the mini fix and the fix, and like the honey badger and the boom box. It's it's turned into a family of weapons. It's a proven platform. Isn't it nice? Eight six. Like I don't even notice shooting it. There's no, so little no, recoil. No, it, it, that to me was the big takeaway. We did that yesterday with the fix. Three hundred grain bullet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you know the energy numbers offhand? I mean, what you're. No, it's difficult because people will quote that. Here's the problem when you That's start right. quoting that. Yeah is we're getting so much rotational energy That's on right. this. So traditionally, rotational energy wasn't, isn't part of the muzzle um, energy calculation because all barrel twists were the same. Right. But now it's not. And if you, if you change, go from one in 11 to one in 10, doesn't really make much of a difference. But when you go from a one in 11 to one in three, there's a huge difference and on target. We also saw with Ethan, uh, your VP of engineering yeah. yesterday, uh, what blows my mind is the fact that uh, with this fast twist rate and all that rotational energy, you were getting double the expansion out of the same rounds with different twist rates. Yeah. You were getting double the expansion using the faster twist rate, yeah, which to me is so twist. weird. And it's great. Like we talked about yesterday or the day before, you know, subsonic especially um, rifle projectiles are very difficult to build a subsonic rifle projectile that will expand. Um, because they're long and slender and rifle projectiles for expansion for hunting or defense or barrier blind situations. It's um, all relies on linear velocity traditionally. Mm -hmm. So you have to design special bullets for subsonic that will ex expand when it enters the target. But fast twist is, is a great aid in that. We don't have to make bullets so weak and the bullets will expand it, easily. It's a paradigm shift of, of sorts, I would say. I mean, it's weird. I, I never would have thought about rotational energy until we started talking about twist rate. <laughs> I mean, you know, we didn't either because I don't know what Ethan said. What you guys have done is you've taken the Honey Badger and you have put it in, we'll call the Honey Badger like a 5.56 platform, right? Sure. It, you know, it's 300 blackout, yeah. but it's but a 5.56 platform. Um, You've essentially taken the Honey Badger and you've put it in a 30 cal or a 762 platform. Yep. But it's shooting 8.6. 8.6, yeah. Kevin Brittingham gives you full credit for 8.6. He said you went three years into hiding yeah. to develop the 8.6. Yeah, so when we were at AAC, we had finished up 300 Blackout. Um, we had delivered some of the military submission guns in 300 Blackout. And the Army was just starting to work on the CSAS program, basically taking the 7.62 gas guns and making them shorter. And so my original thought was 338 Federal is the natural solution. Like, that would be the best possible thing if they're going to start shrinking the gun. Um, but as I spent a little bit more time looking at it um, and talking to the guys at Hornady, uh, the even better way of doing it would be to shorten the case a little bit more, have a subsonic supersonic option, and basically say, take that 300 blackout concept and basically double the range. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're hunting or most military engagements, like you're not talking about four, five, six, seven hundred meters with a, with a carbine. It's more like 70, 100, 150. If you are really honest about what is actually being done with the guns, you don't necessarily need capability at 1,000, capability at 800, if most of your engagements are much, much closer. So you can say, I have better terminal performance at 100 than 308, but I can have a gun that's considerably smaller and lighter. You took something, uh, you made it as small as possible, yet still just as effective as about anything else yeah. um, within those ranges. You have a supersonic option, you have a subsonic option, and you put it into this carbine, which is, is marginally larger, it seems, than the Honey Badger. And yeah. this is the boombox. Yes. We knew fast twists would give us better dispersion or accuracy with subsonic rifle projectiles. Mm -hmm. So that's why we chased it with the Honey Badger and the LVAW, program, you know, in the SIG MCX, going from 1 in 8 to 1 in 7 to 1 in 5. The problem is the military adopted a projectile when we were at 1 in 5. Like 300 blackouts should really be 1 in 3 as well. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the projectiles they selected, the bullets will come apart when we go below 1 in 5 because right. that's what they were testing. So that's another thing with the boom box. We have all this in the rear view mirror in this experience. 
and now we know. But what happened was we were testing, trying to get the best dispersion as possible. And so, of course, in the meantime, we're doing all kinds of lab testing. We're shooting gel. And as we get faster twist, the, the high-speed videos of the gelatin, the initial wound cavity was just growing and growing and growing every time we were getting faster. So, you know, the initial wound cavity with uh, 338 or the 86 going from 1 in 10 to a 1 in 3 is three or four times larger. And then, so that's when we start shooting animals and you notice the impact on animals. And that's where with a 10 inch 8.6, I've shot just about everything in Africa with it. So compared to the honey badger, the sacrifice is really um, less than half a pound. So I don't, you probably wait, it's probably six or eight ounces. It's less than eight ounces, I know. There's, there's the weight differential, um, but it's three times the energy on target and three times the distance. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty cool little package and the two most important but most annoying questions. Mm. When do you think it's gonna be released and how much do you think it's gonna cost? In a configuration similar to this, whether it's an eight inch barrel, a six inch barrel, um, I believe it will be the last month or two of this year, the beginning of next year. We're on track for that. The cost, that's gonna be an expensive gun. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but it's probably gonna be uh, priced similar to whatever, the the Scar Heavies or the HK 762 guns. I mean, it's gonna be in excess of $3,000. Is it safe to say that the main takeaway from this is that this is a Honey Badger in 8.6 that's only slightly larger and it has several improvements? Or do you resent that characterization? No, I mean, that's fair, but everything that we've learned from the Honey Badger and the fixed rifle that we can incorporate this the last decade, we've done it. So whether it's Q-cert, handguard attachment, barrel attachment, being able to change calibers without even swapping the whole upper, you know, over the Honey Badger, the, the carrier system in this is different. You see it vents forward for any gas that gets into the carrier. Uh, there's subtle differences, but enough to make a real difference and worth us making the changes to. Um, this uh, is a, I don't really think of them that This way. is a vague question and, and one I hope doesn't upset you here, but I mean, is mm. it safe to say that the boombox is the honey badger, but better? Oh, that doesn't offend me. I mean, God, I would hope 12 years later we're better. Mm -hmm. No, this is, I mean, to me, this is what kills the honey badger. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the reason to shelve your honey badger. Mm -hmm. Sales might not like that, <laughs> but I like having both of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 300 blackout ammo, it's great. The 300 blackout round is great, uh -huh. super and subsonic, yeah. whether it is um, using for defense or hunting or, you know, just target shooting. It's great. It's quiet. But, you know, we're 12 years down the road. Um, it'll be interesting to see if everyone agrees. Yeah, I, I would certainly agree from a preliminary standpoint. I've seen these now made. I walked through the factory the other day, but I thought that there was a little brand name inflation. You know what we call like... Mm. Gucification, right? And and I, I was uh, blown away. I was proven wrong whenever I saw all of the details that go into this. So yeah, I think it's. I, I mean, I think that's fair. But I think, and until you come and see for yourself, or guys like you explain it to the masses, the extra steps and the detail. You know, it's like I keep saying. You know, it's just like the last few yards. The grit to get through that, most companies don't do. And that's where the real expense is. Is there? Like with a new Corvette and a Ferrari, is there a giant performance difference? You know, a lot of the things you can measure, maybe not. But you know, that that extra few percent is what makes the stuff expensive. I think also keeping budget in mind. You know, I don't think that I can build $4,000 guns or even $3,000 guns and sell them to everyone. So just like where we have the Honey Badger and we did the Sugar Weasel to have a less expensive alternative, because some of the features may not be important to people, um, but they want a lot of their performance. Like with the Sugar Weasel, like this stock assembly that we have on the boom box and the Honey Badger, this is expensive and it's proprietary. Um, it costs many times what a standard receiver extension stock costs. So with the Sugar Weasel compared to the Honey Badger, we just use a standard receiver extension and a Magpul stock. We use forged receivers, mil spec receivers. That saves, I mean, those two things save hundreds and hundreds of dollars, um, you know, on our end. and, and but then you get all the features of the trigger, the fast twist barrels, uh, tapered muzzle, all these things that make a big difference with our products. Adjustable gas block that's compact and lightweight. Um, so we're looking at doing that with the boom box too. So you'll see w what we'll... Liam, go Liam, God damn it. 
You're, you're not being quiet. <laughs> uh, Patrick, move away. Or yeah, quiet. William Patrick, guys, get the f out of here. God. So, you know, you'll see a cost effective alternative. You know, for me, I think that the sugar weasel is a great value. And it's still more expensive than a lot of things in the market, but it's a way for people to buy a Q product that maybe you're unsure. Maybe they can't afford the honey badger, but they want something similar. They can get that. And we're going to do the same with this rifle as well. Um, you know, not everybody can invest that much money in this gun, but you'll still be able to um, get a lot of the great features, the trigger, the fast twist barrel, and you know, that kind of stuff, the adjustable gas block and a gun that everyone can afford. What suppressor am I putting on this if I buy one? The pork chop, it's our 8.6 silencer. So we have it in the short chop, depending on what you want. This is the pork chop, it's the longest one, it's the quietest one, we have a shorter version, which is really, the idea is lighter and it keeps the gun smaller, uh, it's hearing safe, and it's plenty quiet for hunting or a self-defense situation. Mm -hmm. You know, this is designed to impress all your friends. Yeah, sure, and 8.6 performs very well, but I mean, really, you're cheating yourself if you buy a boom box and you don't get a suppressor for it. It seems ridiculous. It seems ridiculous, does it not? It does. I'm kind of tired of talking about it. Can we shoot this son of a bitch right. already? We can. Let's do it.